comment talk, comment talk, comment talk. All right, welcome to this week's fucking comment talk, guys. I'm the I'm your host, the Cube, and I hear I have Alyssa, and we're gonna talk about Shade the Changing Girl number three this week. Alyssa, hello. Hello. So. <laughs> okay. So so uh. This week's this week's Shade the Changing Girl, written by Cecil Castellucci. Uh, the art was by Marley Zarko and Kelly Fitzpatrick. So, me and me, me and Alyssa went over this a little bit before we started recording, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of backstory on Shade the Changing Girl. So, in this run in particular, it's about a character named Loma from the same place that is th who is from the same place that Rack Shade is from who is the original character from Shade the Changing Man and she really because the thing is uh, Rack he was a poet on their planet yeah he was like a really well-known poet so yeah exactly all that stuff so she was a really big fan of him and when like and I told you before like her backstory is that she puts on the jacket because he he used to wear it she really admired him and she want she thought she could get the same kind of fame that that guy brought recognition you know so what ends up happening is she puts on the jacket and inhabits the mind of Megan Boyer, who is a girl who sl who went into a coma through an accident or on purpose, or quote, unquote. quote unquote, not too sure. And in this comic in particular, that's what is basically happening. And it starts off with Loma in her body, and Megan Boyer was a part of a swimming team, or a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not not just a swimming team. They did dancing in the water. They're synchronized swimming. They're synchronized swimming. So what ends up happening is like if the comic kind of starts off with her describing what it is to feel afraid as a bird, like they get they get nervous, they're like you know their feathers rile, but as a person you start sweating, you feel hot, you feel cold, your heart's racing, like like everything's going at once, you know, and she's dealing with that. So she's trying to like kind of adjust to being a person again or being a human basically, and she falls into the water, almost starts drowning because of it. And um, what ends up happening is Wes, the guy who may or may not have something to do with her going into a coma, comes by and is like, hey, I'll help you swim. I'll help you remember how to be you again. And, um, suspicious. yeah, suspicious, right? Like, cause, like, why would he be doing that? Um, as we go along, though, we basically find, we come back to LaPuck, who is Loma's girlfriend on the other planet. And he basically just any boyfriend? boyfriend. I'm sorry. Well, who the fuck knows? Look at these people, I right? Yeah. Like I can't. I can't even tell. For, for I don't know. You don't. Don't. Don't assume their gender. Okay. Oh, so what ends up happening is um, he d he basically is holding Loma. Like as I said before, Loma is basically in this glass case wearing the jacket on his planet, but inhabiting the girl's mind on the other planet. So he's basically holding her, trying to take care of her and protect her, while ba while. Freaking Loma is trying to deal with like high school troubles, and that's one of my problems with this is that if you read the original Rack, you know, Shade the Changing Man comic, it's wild, it's crazy. Like, we're like, there's like literally, like, anytime Rack is near someone, he literally starts driving them crazy. Like, like, their deeper innermost insanities almost start coming to coming to life. Like, there's one guy who's like obsessed with the assassination of JFK, so a giant pillar or not even a pillar a giant like stone statue of jfk's head comes out of the ground and it's there's a hole where does the bullet hit and there's like brain in the statue so like it's literally crazy and then this we're just dealing with high school girl troubles do you think that the way that the craziness comes out in real life do you think that's the way for it to like did that happen in the original comic like yeah. the crazy coming out like in the original comics, that's the way it was always well, was. No, but I'm saying like, like the, the the figures coming out and her like the colorful things. What do you mean? Like when uh, Rack or Loma? No, Loma. You okay. Know, like, shows, like the, things like the out, crazy, like, the, yeah, the insanity. insanity yeah. In yeah, yeah, but it's a lot more intense. Oh, okay. It's a lot more intense in the old comics, and the art was like, I mean, in this, like the whole thing is that it's supposed to be insanity. So they try to like the art kind of kind of tries to reflect that. Like we see a lot of a lot of scenes that are just don't make any sense. That's the whole thing. So. Yeah, you know, exactly. So, I, I, it's not that I don't enjoy the art. I really think the art is okay. I just don't like the story at all. I don't think that this is... I'm sure it might go somewhere eventually. Like, you know, this is only the third issue and things can change. But, as of, right but now, as of right now, I'm not really liking the story because I'm just... I'm just All I'm seeing is high school girl troubles. And where's the entertainment in that? So, what ends up happening is Loma goes to one of the guys she first met when she first kind of touched down and, like, inhabited the body. And his name is River. And he lives kind of close by, and she asks River, "Hey, like, why does everybody hate me so much? Why does everybody hate Megan? Not Shade, you know, not Loma, mm -hmm. but Megan." And uh, he takes her into her, his house and shows her there's a literal, 
Not a Facebook page. It starts with a P. I don't know what this is. Facebook with the PH, Effie. Oh, maybe it's Facebook or whatever. Effie. Okay. And it's a whole page dedicated to how Megan Boyer is just like an a hole, and she treats everybody in the high school like crap. And literally, like, look at some of the stuff. Some of the stuff that people said. Megan dared me to drink, take a cup of water from the toilet she left the turd in. Jamie, she said I was ugliest on the inside. Out, she said I was ugliest on the inside of for four semesters in a row. She's the ugly one. Like you know, she's just like she Megan. Like yeah, Megan Boyer was just like a very, very insulting, you know, insulting thing. So what ends up happening? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So what ends up happening is Loma kind of goes into her med meditation state, trying to like calm the madness <laughs> and uh what ends up happening is she kind of decides that well, like what would megan do like if i'm gonna be in megan's shoes i might as well act as close to megan as possible so she decides like i'm just gonna like first thing i'm gonna do i'm gonna talk to wes so she goes to wes and this is after river kind of like asks like what the heck is going on like i see the literal crazy coming out of the walls when you're nearby like what is all this stuff and she's like <laughs> don't worry about it <laughs> bye bye peace late <laughs> So she literally leaves, and um, Lil Puck is literally trying, like, with his bandmates, trying to, like, desperately get Loma out of the cage and get the jacket off of her, but he just doesn't know what to do. And River is now researching aliens and stuff because now he doesn't he doesn't know what Loma is. So what ends up happening is uh, Loma decides to take these swimming lessons from Wes to kind of get better at it, assuming that's something that Megan would do. And... Uh, what ends up happening is the three girls also on the um, on the synchronized swimming team come up to her and are like, you should be off the swimming team, you're no good anymore, all this, all this, all that. So the first thing that Loma thinks is like, what would Megan do? She'd lose her fucking shit. So Loma literally just starts using the insanity around her to start fighting, uh, fighting these chicks. Starts pounding on them with literal madness. Bugs start crawling out of their heads. She's reaching into their, like, physically reaching into her head, like, not e like straight through, like, vision levels of, like warping through yeah. you know you know warping through stuff and it ends with the pr the coach of the swimming team walking in you guys got detention i'm gonna ask about the three extra hands you got growing <laughs> the bugs and the extra things coming out of the wall now you, you got detention no, no, you know and that's where the comic ends and basically i guess loma and megan are kind of accepting the madness Sort of, you know, kind of taking it in. Wait, so is Megan in like the back of Loma's head? Kind of, like, like, she's like, kind of like, a like, Lo like Loma is like the body, and Megan is like in the back, like, like this is my life, this is kind of what's going on, uh -huh. you know. It's like two people living in the same head, but Lo like Loma is the dominant one, and Megan's kind of in the back of it because she oh, went into a coma. Like, like, yeah, she like if Loma wasn't there, she'd be a vegetable. That's what's yeah. happening. So the comic ends right there, and then we get a nice little side comic of Dial H for Hero. In, in hero or error because the thing is if you like you know you move the letters around hero error all that stuff so what ends up happening it's about a girl named Christy now I don't know if this is like a character in an old comic I might be missing that and I'm sorry if I am but it's a character in an old comic or, or if it is a character in an old comic she basically presses a dials a button that says H for hero she becomes a hero saves the girl kisses the girl wins the girl immediately dies yeah, like immediately, and then a villain flies in and beats the shit out of the Christy, and then Christy reverts back into being a person. Now, I don't like the, the not talking or whatever, I guess it's supposed to be kind of symbolic, but my favorite line is the only real words that we see besides hero, and it says, does the transformation make the hero, because I feel like that's kind of an important question sometimes to ask. So that was Shade the Changing Girls, guys. I kind of enjoyed it. I guess the story isn't really doing much for me. Not really enjoying that writing that much. But the art is definitely reflective of a of a Shade comic. That's what I. That's the thing that they're going for, and that's what I can tell. And I appreciate that. So this has been the Cube and Alyssa. Sayonara. Sayonara, guys. We'll talk to you guys later. See ya.